Hey everyone, and welcome back to my channel. Hope you're having a wonderful day so far. So $2,000 stimulus checks. It's been a while since we've heard that phrase. Well, I'm gonna be going over why they're once again back on the table and why. Plus, of course, we now have the new House Speaker in Mike Johnson. We're gonna be going over why some Social Security and Medicare advocates fear him, what exactly their reasons are, but why in those cases they may actually be wrong, and some of the things may actually be a good thing. But before we go ahead and dive into the main content of today's video, if you wouldn't mind helping me out real quickly by just giving this video a like, that just helps out with the good old YouTube algorithm, and also consider subscribing to my channel if you have not already. Okay, so of course, once again, we do have the new House Speaker in Mike Johnson, but according to CNN, there's actually some Social Security and Medicare advocates who are fearing him because of some of the policies that he wants to implement. But like I mentioned just a moment ago, even though some of these policies may not be the best for Americans in general, in some ways they may actually be better. So I'm gonna be diving into that right now. So according to CNN, in one of his first moves after being elected House Speaker, Mike Johnson promised to form a bipartisan debt commission to tackle what he termed as, quote, the greatest threat to our national security. The announcement sent shivers down the spines of advocates for Social Security and Medicare. That's because when Johnson chaired the Republican Study Committee a few years ago, the conservative group called for a variety of changes to the entitlement programs that it argued would save them from insolvency. And the speaker now intends to address the ballooning spending on Social Security and Medicare as part of the debt commission, according to a source familiar with his office. Now, of course, right now as a country, we are 32 or $33 trillion in debt. And with the interest rates rising, we are paying you know, almost $1 trillion per year just alone in interest. So, so absolutely, I have to agree with him there that one of our greatest national security threats right now, of course, is our national debt. If we continue going in more and more debt, well, there's not going to be much left for the government to spend. We absolutely need to get this under control. Doesn't matter whether you're a Republican or a Democrat, you should absolutely agree that we need to tackle the national debt, get that under control. I mean, if you had a credit card or, you know, and you saw the amount that you're paying in interest on your credit card rise every single month, you would absolutely want to get that under control as well. Well, politicians in Washington need to be doing exactly the same thing. Instead of spending more than what they're bringing in, they need to make sure to bring in more than what they're spending. That way we can get this 32 or $33 trillion in national debt under control. Now, the article goes on to say that, however, advocates contend the committee's proposals are vile attempts to cut benefits by raising the retirement age and making the benefits less generous, among other changes. Here's what's not up for debate. Social Security and Medicare are in financial trouble, and the nation's debt is on an unsustainable trajectory. But solving these fiscal woes would likely require such difficult decisions that lawmakers are low to deal with them. Social Security will not be able to pay full benefits in 2034 if Congress doesn't act, according to its most recent trustees annual report. At that time, the funds reserves will be depleted and the program's continuing income will cover only 80% of benefits owed. So once again, in 2034, like they mentioned, if nothing is done, whatever you're receiving then, you're actually going to receive a cut in your benefits by 20 to 25%. Now, of course, like they mentioned there, of course, there was the Republican Study Committee plan. Here is exactly what was in that plan. So the first thing that they wanted to do is that they wanted to raise the full retirement age. Currently, the full retirement age for most folks is actually the age of 67. Under this plan, the full retirement age would be lifted all the way up until the age of 69. Now, of course, there's also an early eligibility age. This is your early retirement age. Right now, that is the age of 62. Under this plan, it would raise it would be risen up to the age of 64. Now, in addition to that, they would also be changing the way in which the COLAs or the cost of living adjustments are calculated. Right now, they use something called the CPIW. Under the new plan, they would actually change it to a method where you'd be even receiving even less than what you're receiving under the CPIW. So the COLAs each and every year would be going up by a smaller amount. So you would not be receiving as high of increases. Also, in addition to that, People earning above $85,000 for single individuals or $170,000 for couples, you would not be eligible to receive any type of cost of living adjustment. And then finally, they would also be changing the benefit formula so people who earn more income throughout their working years 
would actually receive less in Social Security benefits. And those Americans who earn less during their working career, well, once they reach retirement, once they started collecting Social Security, they would actually give those folks even more money. So people earning the least amount of money throughout their working career and therefore might have less in savings or less in their individual retirement plans, they would actually be receiving more Social Security to make up for that. And those who did very well in life, made a lot of money, probably had a lot in retirement, a lot in savings, well, they're gonna be receiving less in Social Security benefits. And quite frankly, that actually makes a lot of sense to me, that plan, uh, at least that last one. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below on their plan. Now, also in regards to Medicare, uh, he says that he wants to raise the eligibility age to match the same as Social Security and also index it to life expectancy and to increase premiums as well. And they say that these changes will cut spending on Social Security by $756 billion and $1.9 trillion for Medicare over 10 years. So a lot of savings there. Let me know what your thoughts are on the comment section below. Now, as far as the financial outlook for 2024, of course, 2024 is right around the corner. So of course, we have a lot of questions there. Like, are we gonna end up in a recession in 2024? We already had one recession, but then of course, the White House changed the definition of what a recession actually is. Uh, we're gonna have the interest rates lower at some point in 2024. Right now, they're right around 8%. You know, there's a lot of questions to be asked. What's our economy going to look like in 2024? And according to USA Today, the Federal Reserve has made significant progress in bringing down inflation while maintaining growth in the U.S. economy in 2023. However, while inflation has trended lower recently, interest rates are historically high. Economists anticipate the economic fallout from the Fed's tight monetary policy measures may intensify in 2024. Investors are hopeful the Fed will be able to navigate a so-called soft landing for the U.S. economy and to avoid a severe recession in 2024. Unfortunately, inflation remains well above the Fed's 2% long-term target, and experts are divided on whether the Federal Reserve may have simply delayed an inevitable recession. The Federal Reserve itself projects its monetary policy tightening measures will weigh on U.S. economic growth in 2024, and as far as whether or not we can expect a recessionary environment in 2024, they say here that while there is no official government definition for an economic recession, economists typically consider at least two consecutive quarters of negative GDP growth to be a recession, and the Fed is no longer forecasting a prolonged U.S. recession, and economists from Bank of America agree, but the ratio of the 10-year yield to the 10-year yield curves in U.S. Treasuries has been inverted since mid-2022, and an inverted yield curve has historically been a strong indicator that a recession is likely. Also, the New York Fed's recession probability model suggests a 56.12% chance of a U.S. recession by September of 2024. So basically, more than a coin flip there, 56% chance that we are going to have a recession in September 2024. Well, that's a pretty interesting date. Why is that? Because, we, of course, we have the elections coming up in November of 2024. So, you know, just hypoth hypothetically speaking here, let's say that we do end up in a recession in, you know, maybe the summer of next year, people start losing jobs, the economy isn't looking all that great. And, well, what, what does typically the government do in a situation that we end up in a recession? Well, we have some type you know, of a, some type of an economic stimulus package to get the economy rolling again, get, you know, em employers to start hiring workers once again, and get Americans to start spending their money at these stores once again. And you saw in the, the last recession that was kind of generated by COVID, of course, the government sent out a lot of stimulus checks, three rounds in total. And also, right around 2020, what did Joe Biden promise if we elected two Democratic senators in Georgia? He promised... $2,000 stimulus checks. Well, once again, we have another election. This time, Joe Biden himself is up for re-election. So, you know, once again, I wouldn't be totally surprised if he came out and said, guess what? If you elect me instead of Donald Trump or whoever the Republican nominee happens to be, well, you might just get another $2,000 stimulus check. But if, if you remember, of course, he promised $2,000 back in 2000. Uh, 2020, but in fact, we only received $1,400. But once again, I wouldn't totally be surprised if he says, if you get out in the polls and you vote for me and you vote for Democrats to retake the House and you vote for Democrats to retake the Senate, we are absolutely going to send you more money in the mail. It wouldn't totally surprise me as, as, as really at all 
Um, so, you know, that's definitely something on the table. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below. Can you personally see it happening? I wouldn't be completely surprised because we do have a president set for this. This is something that he has said before. If you elect me and my Democratic colleagues, we will send you stimulus checks in the mail. Once again, I wouldn't be totally surprised and that would completely coincide with a potential recession next year right before the elections. But let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below once again. And that's all we have for today's video. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed and I will see you in the next one.